Hello, good morning, and welcome to this very first episode of my new vidcast. Now, this is specifically aimed at helping you to take your English to the next level so that you can become more advanced in your English speaking, listening, and understanding. So, this is going to consist of a number of different parts which you will discover as we go through. I'm going to try and keep it quite regimented and to a certain amount of time. I think it will be about half an hour, but let's see. Hello, if you're joining me, please do feel free to say hello, and I will be trying to answer some questions and comments as we go through. So, welcome. Now, the very first thing that I'm going to discuss with you during this vidcast is the weather, because as you know, in Britain, we love to talk about the weather. In fact, I think that the weather comes up in every single conversation that I have. Every single day. So here we go. The weather here in the UK at the moment is、um, it's quite dull, to be honest. We have outbreaks of rain during the morning, heavy in places, rain giving way to showers in the afternoon, some of these heavy and thundery. So here we're talking about rain giving way to showers. Now, rain and showers are the same thing. But the word showers suggests that it's heavy rain. So the rain starts the day, but that gives way to showers later in the afternoon. So to give way is to step aside and allow something else to take the front, to take the fore. So rain gives way, giving way to showers in the afternoon. Some of these showers are heavy and thundery. So we're possibly going to have thunder and lightning. Still breezy at times, and breezy means windy. And the temperatures are ranging from 14 degrees Celsius to 18 degrees Celsius. So it's not too cold, but it's definitely not feeling like summer anymore. Oh no! Well, hopefully, you can still hear me. Unfortunately, my camera has frozen.、Um, if you can still hear me, then do let me know. And、um, we will continue this vidcast like an actual podcast. So you won't be able to see my face, but you will be able to hear my voice, hopefully, and we'll be able to still go through the session. Oh, technology! <laughs> It does love to let us down at the most inopportune moments. In fact, I would love to hear from you. When has、um, technology or equipment let you down? When has technology let you down? Has it been recently, or、um, was it a long time ago? Was it something really important, and the technology then let you down? For me, of course, it's always my computer, my computer, my software, something or other always goes wrong. But hopefully, you'll still enjoy the sounds of my voice. So that was the weather. What's the weather like in your country right now? And what's coming up next? Well, next I want to teach you an idiom. So the idiom that you're going to learn today is around the rain, because rain is quite typical here in the UK, and we often use this idiom to take a rain check. To take a rain check, and a rain check basically means、um, to refuse an offer. So it's a polite way to refuse someone's offer. Implying that you might accept their offer in the future. So, if you, for example, ask me to come out for a coffee or for lunch, and I say I can't, but I would like to, maybe next week or sometime next month, I'm taking a rain check. I'm taking a rain check. And here is an example sentence for you to help you understand it. I could say, "Thank you for inviting me to your picnic." I would love to come, but I'm afraid I will have to take a rain check. I'm afraid I will have to take a rain check. Now, notice here, this is used all the time. We regularly say I am afraid, and in this context, it doesn't mean I'm scared. It means I'm sorry. Okay, so it's very important that you remember this one, because this one is used all the time by natives, especially in.、Um, In polite and formal conversation, so it's a good one to remember. I am afraid 
I will have to take a rain check. Or, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't make it. We'll have to take a rain check. All right, wonderful. So lots of reports coming in about the weather in different countries. What have we got? It's um, it's 22 degrees in on the east coast of Spain. Um, it's a bit cold where Marco is. Where are you, Marco? Um, Sky says it's stormy here and it's going to rain. Sounds like it's bad, not just for us, but for other people as well. It's 14 degrees in New Zealand. Um, the weather in Kurdistan is nice and sunny. Oh, that's where we need to go then. In Buenos Aires, the weather is cloudy and chilly. Okay. And Anne-Marie has said, technology lets me down during an important presentation at my school. Oh, sorry. Technology let you down during an important presentation at your school last year. Suddenly, in the middle of the presentation, your PowerPoint didn't work anymore. Ah, what a nightmare. I hate it when technology just stops working. You test it, you check it, but it all works fine until the point when you need it. What a nightmare that is. Hello, patrons. I have my patron Skype room open and you guys are here. Um, Eureka has rushed home um, to study and yay, you've managed to jump into this advanced English vidcast. That's fabulous. Um, Swavak is telling me that the the vidcast audio is working. Thank you, Swavek. And Eureka says, I go crazy when my Wi-Fi stops working. Yes, in this day and age, it's very difficult to do any work, really, without some form of internet. So when the Wi-Fi goes down, it can be very difficult for us. Okay, so let's take a rain check and move on. So now we're going to look at the news and Again, on the subject of weather, there's been some terrible weather in some parts of the world, hasn't there? I'm sure you've all heard about the hurricane that has hit um, in, where was it, in the Turks and Caicos Islands in the Caribbean, how terrible it's been. So we're going to read an article now on Hurricane Irma. And you are free to read along with me and listen. I will try to read it at a slower pace, just so that you can get all of the vocabulary. So, the news. Hurricane Irma has pummeled the Turks and Caicos Islands after leaving a trail of destruction across the Caribbean, killing at least 14 people. This may be a new word for some of you. Pummeled means to hit something over and over again. You pummel it, continuously hit. So Hurricane Irma has pummeled the Turks and Caicos Islands after leaving a trail of destruction, a trail of destruction across the Caribbean, killing at least 14 people. Howling winds and rough seas battered. This is another verb similar to pummeled to com completely hit and beat up something. So howling winds and rough seas battered the British Overseas Territory, experience, experiencing a top-rated Category 5 hurricane for the first time. So a top-rated Category 5 hurricane for the first time. Some 500,000 people were told to leave South Florida with Irma due on Sunday. This word means to be expected, the time it's expected. When is it due? The hurricane was due on Sunday. So some 500,000 people were told to leave South Florida with Irma due on Sunday. The hurricane has been downgraded to a Category 4, but officials warn that it remains extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous. The US National Weather Service says that Irma was expected to bring wind speeds of around 165 miles per hour over the weekend. Notice how I say this number, 100 and 65 miles per hour, 165 miles per hour over the weekend. An estimated 1.2 million people, and so we always say point when we see this dot when it comes to numbers, 
an estimated 1.2 million people have been affected by Irma, and that could rise sharply to 26 million, the Red Cross says. The Red Cross is a charitable organisation. It's a charitable organisation and their name is the Red Cross. There are concerns that disease, disease could spread rapidly in areas where drinking water and sanitation services have broken down. And officials have warned that the death toll is likely to rise. A death toll is the count, the number of people killed or the, the, the number of people dead is the death toll. So it's the number, the count of the dead. Okay, well, that's terribly sad. And if anyone here knows anyone or has been directly affected by these weathers, I am terribly sorry. And I hope that you manage to get things sorted out very soon. My thoughts are definitely with those people affected. But I do hope you found that helpful. I will always try to include um, article extracts from current affairs, from the news, so that you can get used to using more advanced English and seeing um, reported speech written down. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. Hopefully we can cheer things up a little bit. Let's move on to the next section, which is going to be a poem, a very short poem, a nice fun poem, but some of you really loved the poems I was putting out previously and so now the poem has a home, the poem will live on the vidcast. <laughs> okay, so today's vidcast poem is a poem called I'm Lonely, So Lonely and it's by one of my favourite writers, Ken Nesbitt. So, I will let you see the words on the screen. Here we go. I'm lonely, so lonely. A poem by Ken Nesbitt. I'm lonely, so lonely. I'm always alone. I never get emails or calls on my phone. I sit by myself in my room every day and wonder why nobody wants to play. My classmates avoid me. They never say, hi. They don't seem to know I'm a wonderful guy. And even the strangers I see on the street go out of their way to make sure we don't meet. They jump and they run to get out of my path. I guess maybe this year I'll take my first bath. <laughs> So the reason everyone's avoiding him is because he smells bad, because he hasn't had a bath. <laughs> I love it. I know these ch these are children's poems, but I think children's poems can sometimes be incredibly expressive and they're very fun. They're, they're very funny um, poems and so I really enjoy kids' poems. But of course, I will also do some advanced poems in the future episodes, perhaps a little Shakespeare every now and again as well. So do give me some suggestions of poems if you have any particular poems you'd like to hear me read. I'm more than happy to take your suggestions. So looking at this poem, I thought there was a few items um, in there that we could discuss. And these are the items I want to discuss. The idea of lonely versus alone. So if you are lonely, it means that you feel sad because you're alone. So to be lonely is to feel sad and upset because you're alone. It's that negative feeling of being alone. Whereas the word alone simply describes your situation, the fact that you are by yourself, you are with nobody, you are by yourself, you are alone. So in some cases, when I'm alone, I'm happy to be alone. So therefore, I am not lonely. If I'm happy to be alone, I cannot be lonely. But I am described as alone. I am alone. If I describe my situation as being quite lonely, I could say I feel lonely, I am lonely, it was a lonely place. It means it has a sadness or I feel sadness because I don't have any other people with me. 
In fact, you can feel alone and feel lonely even when you're sharing your space with somebody. You could be holding someone, hugging someone, but still feel lonely because you don't feel that emotional connection. So to feel lonely is to feel sad due to being alone, but being alone is just your situation. You're with nobody else. Okay, fabulous. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure it does. The next one I want to look at is the difference between a stranger and a strange person. These are completely different people. And hello, Lucy has just jumped in. Lucy says, such a useful lesson. You guys are so lucky to have such a talented and dedicated teacher like Anna. Keep up the good work. Oh, thanks, Lucy. You're very sweet. Unfortunately, my video has frozen. And so you're just looking at the, the notes that I've made. <laughs> um, but thanks for joining me. Okay, so the difference between a stranger and a strange person. This came up this morning with some of my gold member students. Um, they, they were unsure of the difference. They felt that maybe a stranger and a strange person were the same thing, but they're not. You see, I can know somebody very, very well and I can think that they are strange because to be strange is to be odd or not normal. So if you are strange, you're not like everybody else. You're strange, you're different. So I can know someone very well and say, this is my friend. My friend is a strange person. However, a stranger describes somebody you don't know. And that's it. A stranger might be perfectly normal, but they're someone you don't know. So being a stranger doesn't mean you're strange. Okay? It just means that you're unfamiliar to the, the subject. So a stranger and a strange person, completely different. Try to remember that one um, for the future. Okay, and then finally, the difference between wonder and wonder. So these sound very similar and there is a huge difference between them. So I regularly see them mixed up. Now to wonder, spelt with an A, is to kind of go off, off the track, go off the path. So let's say we're walking down the road and we know where we're going. We're going to the end of the road. But during our journey to the end of the road, um, I decide to start walking into somebody's garden and you could say I am wandering into the garden. So it's to take a gentle walk or to stroll off the path. So to go somewhere else, to wander. So I could wander in the countryside, I could wander in the hills, I could wander around the garden. So it's just to walk without any set direction. And then the word wander spelt with an O, is to think about something. So you're, maybe you're questioning something. I wonder what the weather is like today where Lucy is. I wonder what I should eat for dinner. I wonder how many people are watching this vidcast. I wonder if anyone's enjoying this. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's finding it helpful. Okay, so to wonder with an A is to walk somewhere and to wonder with an O is to think about something and to question something. I hope that all makes sense. So there you go, some new vocabulary for you. Um, maybe you already knew that, but if you didn't, then something extra and exciting for you for today. Do try when you learn these new words to use them. So my advice for today is to try to use one of these examples in the right context. And by using the vocabulary a number of times, then you will lock it into your long-term memory and you'll be able to add it to your general vocabulary. Okay? So the next thing we're going to do, ta-da, is have a bit of a sing song. Now, any Beatles fans out there, if you are a fan of the Beatles, then let me know. So um, lots of you ask me to sing. <laughs> Lots of you ask me to sing during my live lessons and it always embarrasses me. Um, and actually, I'm quite glad that the video is not working because it's so embarrassing singing. Um, but I promised that I would sing this morning for you if I was feeling in good voice. And as I've been up since six o'clock this morning, my voice is, is pretty much woken up now. So we're going to sing together. We're going to sing um, a couple of sections from a Beatles song called... Does anyone know it? Does anyone recognise these lyrics? It's called Can't Buy Me Love. Can't
Can't Buy Me Love. Uh, it's a great song. And um, what I'm going to do is sing it a little slower. I'd like you to sing with me. And then we'll see if we can speed it up. So here we go. I'll buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. I get you anything, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. Cause I don't care too much for money, money can't buy me love. I give you all I got to give if you say you'll love me too. I may not have a lot to give, but what I got I'll give to you. I don't care too much for money. Money can't buy me love. Can't buy me love. Everybody tells me so. Can't buy me love. No, 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 no. <laughs> I am blushing right now. I'm literally, I, I'm as red as a strawberry. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Um, oh bless you, Strongwit has dropped a 5 euro super chat, thank you so much, and you said I like this new format, that's very sweet of you, and um, what have we got here, Suavek has said, hey Jude, it's pretty nice, yes, hey Jude is a great song, and I can definitely do that one if people love the Beatles, I will do that in future, um, Eureka says, you know she sang it before, right, question mark, um, I have actually done a video on Hey Jude, um, it was quite a long time ago now, but I broke down the lyrics and did a video especially on that song, but I can definitely include it in future. Um, lots of you being very sweet, this is not a, um, <laughs> this is not me kind of showing off singing or anything or saying I'm a great singer, this is literally because learning English through song is a really good method, and if you haven't already started using the method of listening to songs in English, then you're definitely missing out and it's something you should start employing straight away. Because when we listen to music, it relaxes our brain and it helps us to take on information in a way that we don't normally take it on. And it helps to lock it into our long-term memory. We can always remember a tune and therefore the lyrics. In fact, there are a number of songs that are not in English that I remember, even though I don't speak those languages. So if you start singing songs in English, it will help you to remember certain vocabulary and, in some cases, the structure of the grammar. Okay, so let's do this one more time together. Um, I'm sorry if you don't like my voice. Um, some of you are being very sweet and say you love it. I'm sorry if you don't love it. And um, some of you are saying it's horrible. Um, again, I'm not kind of putting myself out there as an amazing singer. I'm just trying to help you. So um, you can turn the volume down if you like, uh, but let's sing it one more time. Let's do it all together. And um, I'll try and speed it up a little bit this time. Okay, so here we go. I buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. I get you anything, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. Cause I don't care too much for money, and money can't buy me love. I give you all I got to give if you say you'll love me too. And I, I may not have a lot to give, but what I've got I'll give to you. And I don't care too much for money. Money can't buy me love, can't buy me love. Everybody tells me so, can't buy me love. No, 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 no. How did you find that? Were you able to sing along with that one, guys? Hmm. Oh, wow, fabulous. Hello. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but you've just dropped a five pound super chat. That's very sweet. Thank you very much. Um, you said a great mix of learning material. Thank you for this. And that is Amicolic. Amicolic? Amicolics? Thank you so much. That's very sweet. And as you know, all, um, all contributions to this channel via Super Chats do go into one big bowl, one big pot, and that money is then used to help this channel to grow and to help me to buy equipment and 
I do need to invest in new software so it doesn't keep letting me down like today, um, which will be the next investment I make actually once the super chat pot is full. Um, and so when you're contributing to this channel, you are helping everybody. So on behalf of the community, the two of you who've dropped super chats today, thank you. Now, as a way of saying thank you, I'm happy to send you the notes from today's lesson. If you would find that helpful, please feel free to drop me an email and I will send them to you. Of course, you can also choose to have the notes from any other lesson that I have previously done. So uh, let me just check my notes. I think that is everything I had on the list for today. Um, in future, I will also be doing things like jokes and um, riddles as well. Um, so if you have enjoyed today's session and you thought it was helpful, then please do let me know. Um, the easiest way you can do that is by giving this video a big fat thumb. If you like it and it's got lots of likes, then I'll know that this is a successful format and therefore I can do more of it in the future. Um, you can also help me to um, get the word out there about this vidcast by sharing it with um, any of your social media platforms, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or wherever you are sociable, whether it's WhatsApp or Skype, any groups that you know of where people will be interested in learning English. If you can get the word out there, help me to build this channel get the um, view count on this particular video up and then I'll know that I should definitely do one of these every week. So let's say for the next, um, for, the, for the foreseeable future, for the foreseeable future, I will do these every Friday morning. Okay, so let's say definitely next Friday morning, around the same sort of time, if it's good for you, we'll do another one. But now it's time for me to answer your questions. So I'm gonna stay for another five minutes. If you have any questions, then please, feel free to ask away. So um, Christopher says, probably if we can't see you speaking, then you can sound a bit like a DJ. <laughs> I had initially actually intended to do these podcasts like this, sorry, vidcasts like this. Um, but then I wondered whether you would prefer to see me speaking um, or if you'd prefer to just listen to me. Unfortunately, of course, the video is broken today. So although I have my face all maked up for you, um, all maked up, all made up, dear, dear Anna, get your tenses right. Um, unfortunately, yes, I'm sat here looking pretty for you, but no one can see me. <laughs> um, Michael says, I love that song very much. I love it even more when you sing it, Anna. Thank you. I prefer it when the Beatles sing it, to be honest, but that's very sweet. Thank you very much. Saza has said, snatch up. What does it mean? So to snatch something up is to snatch is to grab something very quickly. And normally if you use the word snatch, it means that you've um, rudely taken something. So I would be holding something. And if you take it out of my hand without me giving you permission, it means you're snatching it from me. So but to snatch something up means to just get something very quickly. Um, oh, bless Javier or Javier. How, how do you pronounce that? Javier? has just dropped a five euro super chat and said, sadly, I have to go, but have a good day. Bye bye. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. And wow, um, Andreas, thank you so much. You've also dropped a five euro super chat. That's very, very kind of you guys. I really do appreciate that. Okay, so um, what else are we saying? Helen has said, Anna, you have a boyfriend right now? Question mark. Um, I do have a boyfriend, actually. Thank you for asking. Um, yes, I'm very happy. He looks after me. He's very nice. He's called Nicholas and he's a very nice young man. Well, not too young, but <laughs> you know. Um, okay, what else do we have? Oh, wow. Julia, hello. Julia has also very kindly dropped a super chat and said, you rock. Well, thank you, Julia. You know, I think you rock too. Julia is one of my gold members and she's an absolute star. And I hope you found today's video useful, Julia. Um, Mohammed said, can you teach us some link words? Um, uh, well, sure. Um, but I, I also feel that the format that I've kind of covered today, where I'm just generally covering a whole bunch of stuff is more helpful in terms of taking your English to the next level, because this is how native learn, but sure, I'll put link words on the list and try and do a dedicated lesson for link words for you. 
Okay, life is hard, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you should give up. Absolutely right, Ahmed. Life can be hard, but you should never give up. Always strive to make life better and to make yourself happy and people around you happy. Um, what does what is meant by the C in 18 degrees Celsius? So the C stands for Celsius, I think. Um, yes, so 18 degrees Celsius. Can I say a dishy girl, says Assad. Um, yes, you can describe a girl as dishy. So dishy is an adjective and it means um, attractive. Cool, blimey, many kinds of generous people today. Yes, there are very generous people today wanting to help this community to grow and it's very kind. Um, you should sing something of Celine Dion. Oh gosh, I think that's a bit beyond me. Um, I promise I'll donate as soon as I can. Oh, you bless you, you don't have to, but thank you. Um, you are one of my everyday teachers. Oh, Tom, that's very sweet, thank you. Saza says, what does shake mean? To shake is to move back and forward. So you shake it, shake, shake, shake it. Like you shake your shoulders or you shake your bum if you're dancing. <laughs> um, oh, Eureka, bless you. You sent a super chat as well and said, hi, Anna, do you find shadowing helps? Now, if you mean shadowing by mimicking, imitating or copying, then absolutely. So for example, when I was reading the poem today, when I was singing today, I hope that you were reading out loud along with me or that you were singing along with me because the shadowing is exactly how we learn our native language. So as a child, you learn literally by copying your parents or your peers. And so it, it is important for you to shadow when you're trying to learn another language. Um, oh, God, okay, so people are asking about money. Do you take money? Um, so. As you might see, some people have been dropping super chats and super chats are contributions to the channel. So the money comes to me eventually and then it goes towards buying software and equipment and um, all that kind of stuff to make sure that you get these lessons on a regular basis. Um, you are even better than my ESOL teacher. Oh, wow, thank you. That's, that's very, very kind of you. What does cheesy mean? If something is cheesy, it means it's quite sweet, quite nice, um, but it's a bit, it's, oh, I can't, how do I describe cheesy? Hmm, let me see if there's a good explanation of this. So, for example, if I'm, I can't show you because I can't show you the video. <laughs> um, my video is not working, but I could show you a cheesy smile is a smile that's just over the top. Um, okay, so the... Dictionary actually suggests that cheesy um, in, in an informal slang way means cheap and low quality. But I, I don't see it that way. I don't think natives see it necessarily as being low quality. It's just a bit, ooh, a bit, ooh. It's very hard to explain. So a cheesy movie might be a movie that's very soppy and very romantic and, and then maybe it makes fun of the fact that it's very soppy. It would be cheesy. Um, or if I say to, if I say to my boyfriend, oh, I love you so much. You're like the best boy in the whole wide world. Then that's pretty cheesy. And if I buy him a big card that says, I love you. And when he opens it, little glittery hearts jump out of the card. That would be a cheesy card. <laughs> I hope that's, I hope that explains it. It's a difficult word to explain actually. Um, okay, I'll take one more question and then I'm going to wrap up, which if you watched yesterday's lesson, you'll know that wrap up means to end and finish up the lesson. Um, lots of comments coming through. If I don't read out your comment, it doesn't mean I haven't seen it. Um, if I can't read it during the lesson, I always hold on and read them all at the very end. Um, Amal says, what does corny mean? Corny and cheesy are actually very similar. So corny is pretty much the same as cheesy. So exactly what I just explained about my boyfriend, if I bought him a card and it had glitter that flew out of it and I said all these these um, over amorous statements, then that would be a bit cheesy, a bit corny. Um, okay, hi Anna. I can help you with any software issues. I can solve it remotely. Oh, that's very kind of you. Th the problem with my software is it just needs upgrading. 
<laughs> that's all. I know what the problem is. It's just the upgrade is going to cost me £200. And so I just don't have enough money to cover that yet. But as lots of you have been very generous today, that money does go towards um, saving for that. So as soon as I have that £200, I will invest in the software and make sure that it's sorted out. But that's very kind of you to offer to help. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you found this vidcast helpful. Don't forget that if you would like this to continue as, as a weekly edition, then please do make sure that you give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with, I don't know, share it with your friends or anyone who also might find it helpful. I do want to share one thing with you before I go though, and that is um, my channel, Bella and Beans. So I have a children's channel and this is intended strictly for either beginner learners or children. And um, we released a video today, which I'm going to share a little of it with you now. And if you think of anyone who would like this channel, then I would ask you to please go and find the channel, Bella and Beans TV and give it a like. But I'll share a little of one of our most recent videos, which was released this morning. And uh, this is me in a purple wig <laughs> playing Bella. <laughs> oh, hello, Jigglers. I'm just colouring in. Would you like to see what I've done so far? <laughs> this was one of my favourites to do because I really like butterflies. Look at all the different colours I could use. Oh, and I really like this colouring book, in fact because look, I have some flowers to colour in and on the other page there is a fish and here we have an astronaut in space. Oh, I'm so excited about doing this one. Maybe I'll start right now. Hi Bella! Oh. <laughs> Hello Cheeks! What you doing? Oh, I'm just colouring in. Colouring in? Don't you find that boring? No, not at all. In fact, colouring in is really good fun, isn't it, Jigglers? Hi, Bella. Oh, hello, Beans. Oh, hi, Jigglers. Hi, Cheeks. Mm -hmm. Oh, were you colouring in, Bella? Yes, would oh, you like to join in? Yes, please. It's my favourite thing to do. Oh, well, I was just telling Cheeks how much fun it is because he thinks it might be boring. Boring? No, don't be silly, Cheeks. It's the best of fun. In fact, Cheeks, why don't you colour in with me, Beans and the Jigglers and then you'll know how much fun it is. Well, I'd love to colour in with you, but I don't know the difference between the colours. You don't know the colours? That's all right. We can show you, can't we? Why don't we put you over here on the settee and me, Beans and the Jigglers can tell you all about the colours. So, for example, this is red. Red is the colour of a ladybird. Do-da. Da, red ladybird. Yellow is the colour of a duck. Do da do da, yellow duck. Pink is the colour of a pig. Do da do da, pink pink pig. These are the colours that we see. Can you sing? Colours with me. Okay, guys, I'm going to bring you back to the grown up world. Um, so that is Bella and Beans and their little hamster, Cheeks. And um, our idea for this channel is to um, really try to make education for very young children, for preschoolers, good quality, um, highly entertaining, and yes, yeah, just a better quality because we feel like. There is a lot of children's educational content on YouTube that is maybe a bit lazy and um, we, th we felt that children deserved better. So we are trying our very best to, we're trying our very best to make content that's, that's good for children, wholesome, that helps parents to um, educate their children and to feel good about what their children are watching. And so we have a lot of plans for this particular channel. And so if you know anyone who would benefit from this channel, or if you have any young children yourself, or you're a teacher of young children, please do come and find the channel Bella and Beans TV. Subscribe, watch the content, and I would love it if you could share it with anyone that you know who would benefit. 
All right, so that's enough from me. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I do hope that you have an incredible weekend. I have lots of fantastic videos in store for you. I just can't edit them fast enough, but hopefully next week will be an interesting week for you. I will be back again on Monday, as always, live and looking forward to seeing you. All right, thank you guys. Uh, take care. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And um, if any of you are able to, I'd love to have you translating my videos. So if you have any time, there is a link in the description box below where you can go and see what, um, what videos need translating. Otherwise, um, if you go to any of my videos and click more, you'll see the translate option there. And I would love to see it in your language. That would be super helpful. But if not, don't worry, I will see you again on Monday. Thank you to everyone who's dropped a super chat. You guys are awesome and thank you for um, my patrons. I will continue to be in the Skype room for a few minutes to answer any more questions. All right, guys, lots of love from London. Take care and goodbye.